Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, just letting you know that having two kids is crazy. Um, it's been a lot of fun learning how to manage uh, everything while we're in this new now. So if you hear Sesame Street in the background, that's because Hadley is hanging out with me while we do our techniques of the week. Today we're talking about utilizing a calendar. It is Life Pro Tip Thursday. So some of the things we'll talk about are different types of calendars, uh, the holidays, annual events, um, how to use it to uh, avoid getting charged so you can keep some free stuff, um, setting daily routines, using for positives and break times, and then also using it for worry times. So quick check-in, some good news. I got an email from a student yesterday, and it made me so happy. Uh, because of confidentiality, I can't share with you which student it was, but it was somebody from Farmington Elementary, and it made my day. Um, so if you want to make my day, if you want to fill your bucket, just shoot me an email, and I'll be really excited. Media review, we cannot stop uh, saying, can I pet that dog? I don't know if you guys have seen this yet or not. We might be late to the party, but... Um, we just keep saying it and, and our little, little girl happily just keeps telling us no. And then random facts. So today for calendars, I could not pick. I did a Google search for cool calendar facts or random calendar facts. And there were so many that I just, I couldn't pick. Um, so if you get bored, go ahead and Google random calendar facts. Cause it's kind of a fun little wormhole to fall down into couple different types of calendars. Digital, um, this is probably what most of you guys are familiar with, calendars on our phones or a tablet or on our laptop. Um, I use the Outlook calendar through email because I'm on there every day anyway. Some of you guys are probably going to use Gmail. You can also use paper and pencil. Having wall calendars can be nice reminders. You can put important stuff on the wall so you see it when you walk by. Or putting post-it notes on the fridge can work for some people. For me, that would drive me nuts. Some crazier kinds of calendars, Stonehenge is a calendar. You can use a, a lunar calendar, so based on, you know, when the full moon's out and when the new moon's out. Uh, you can look at seasonal calendars like migrations. Um, some of the earliest calendars, uh, like the Egyptians, used the, uh, the rising of the dog star Sirius. Um, or you could use a calendar that's carved into a wall, you know, whatever works for you. So the first thing to use a calendar for is for annual events. Um, the nice thing is some calendars already come with that. So like I know that Mother's Day is coming up. It's just nice to have that reminder there so that, you know, you don't forget about things and and remember events like Mother's Day or birthdays or those kinds of things. One of the nice things about having a calendar is you can set reminders. Um, so I like to set reminders about a month before somebody's birthday just so I can start thinking about what gift to give them because otherwise I end up rushing and it ends up being a late gift and it just doesn't feel good. Um, expiration. So if you go grocery shopping and you've got something that's going to expire, you might want to write the expiration of that item on a calendar somewhere so that you don't end up going to the, the fridge or the pantry and figuring out, oh man, I was really looking forward to this, but we're going to have to toss it because it's expired. Um, another thing you could do is if you've got a driver's license or a credit card or a passport, um, set a three-month reminder for that so that you don't have to rush at the very last minute and try to get some of those things renewed. Um, you can also use a calendar for routine maintenance, like checking the smoke alarm batteries because we know how awful it is when one of them starts chirping and you have no idea which one it is. Um, or things like oil changes for a car. And then the last point, um, if you sign up for like free trials or subscriptions or, or those kinds of things, set a reminder a day or two before that free trial ends because a lot of times these companies are really good at sucking you in and getting enough of your information to where they can start billing you without telling you that they're going to start billing you. So if you set a reminder to cancel that free subscription two or three days before they're going to start billing you, then you can save a whole lot of headache. Routines are another really good feature of calendars. So we all do better when we have routines. Well, I shouldn't say we all, but most of us. There was a period of time when I was in college and I was vehemently opposed to having structure and a routine and a schedule because I thought it's so much more fun to live spontaneously. Um, 
that is not the case anymore. I really do find that there is comfort and consistency because it helps me sleep better, eat healthier, exercise more, and just generally be more productive. And for those of you that are like how I was when I was 18 to 22, um, if you don't like having a full routine, maybe just give yourself a couple different options of things that you can do. So you're not like pigeonholed into, into having a very set schedule, but you do get some tasks accomplished and you do have some semblance of routine. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of you guys are going to get that reference, but uh, that's Justin Timberlake. Um, it's important to use a calendar to schedule in some positives and, and self-care. So I figured out a long time ago that if I didn't structure in some self-care time, I wouldn't do it. Um, a lot of times we feel like self-care is selfish or, um, you know, we really, we've got so much going on. We don't have time to really give to ourselves, to check in with ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally. But every time I've I've sort of penciled in some sort of self-care time or a break. I've always been so much happier in the long run. Um, you can even use it for playing video games, having a fun activity, taking a break. Um, if you're going to use it for video games, that might help prevent them from taking over your life like they have a tendency to do. Um, I all, My breaks typically are daydreaming. I, I've said this in a previous screencast. I really love daydreaming, and some people call it meditation. That's fine. Some people call it mindfulness. I I was calling it daydreaming before mindfulness really became you know such a hot hot topic. So I'm going to stick with daydreaming time. Um, and we all do this, um, right? We get to mark off vacations, breaks from work or school, um, just to give us something to look forward to. When I was in a long distance relationship. The reason that we were able to stay sane is because before we left, before we would go back to, I was in Salt Lake, she was in San Diego, we would always figure out when we were going to see each other next. So that way we had it on the calendar, we had something to look forward to. It made those, those long distance months more bearable. And last up, worry time. So if you do struggle with anxiety or have incessant worrying, um, we can schedule it in time during your day that really helps us not worry all day long. What happens when we have a scheduled worry time is when we are going through our day and one of those worries pops into our head, instead of trying to ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist, and instead of letting it overtake our entire afternoon, we can say, you know what, I understand that this is a worry that I have. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to try to make it go away. I'm just going to redirect it to my 15 minutes of worry time that I spend right before dinner. Um, one note, I wouldn't do worry time right before bed. That might make you sort of really perseverate on some of those worries. So I would do it before uh, a more positive activity. So I really like having it before dinner. Or maybe um, if you play video games or have um, some sort of social time with friends, um, I would maybe do it before something that's going to get your mind off of it. Um, another thing, this isn't really worry time, but if you know that you've got a tough week or a tough month coming up or a really tough day, you can schedule in a, a little event or a reminder just to give you some words of encouragement or maybe tell yourself a joke. And even if you were the one to do it, a lot of times, you know, it's just sort of in your subconscious, you've kind of forgotten you did it. And then when that day comes, um, so like, for example, maybe you're going to do taxes one, one week. If you set a, a little reminder that says, hey, way to go, way to get your, your stuff done, sometimes that can really make you feel good. And, and even though you know you did it, it still sounds like it's coming from somebody else. So just a couple of things that you can do for anxiety or when you're having tough times. Uh, my challenge for you guys today is if you're a novice, try out a few different calendar ideas to see what works for you. And if you're very experienced, see if any of the tips in this screencast work that you maybe you didn't know about before. Or if you already knew everything that I said today, uh, send me an email with whatever I've left off because I'm sure that you guys all have tips and strategies that you use that I didn't include here. Or alternative challenge, just explore some of those crazy random facts about calendars because I mean, I, I'm not trying to you know, tell you what to do with your time, but it was really kind of a fun little dive down into 
how we created calendars and why we have leap years and just a whole lot of fun facts about calendars. Last slide is best ways to get in touch with me. Hopefully I hear from you guys soon. Take care.